Ronin is a Japanese word originating from the feudal Japan era. It stood for a samurai who had no lord or master. 2020's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin, published by IDW Publishing, showcased a distant future where all the Ninja Turtles, along with Master Splinter, were killed except for Michelangelo, thus making him the last Ronin. It was a five-issue miniseries followed by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin Lost Years, published in 2023. The saga showcased Mike's path of solitude, where he dealt with a massive depression of losing all his brothers and Master Splinter. He spent years recovering and evolving until he finally realized that his life would be incomplete if he didn't avenge the death of his family. Written by Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird, Tom Waltz, and Andy Kuhn, the series is probably the darkest take on the Ninja Turtles, with, of course, a discontinued storyline and also the best so far. Even with the kick-ass fights, the story beautifully carved minute details to illustrate the turmoil Mike went through. In today's in this video, we will be talking about the last Ronin saga and how the once party-loving, jovial Michelangelo exacted revenge for the death of his family. Without any further ado, let's begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The story of the last Ronin, the death of the ninja family. It all started after the Ninja Turtles, along with Master Splinter, were ambushed by the Foot Clan soldiers. Casey Jones had finally proposed to April, and to celebrate the occasion, the Ninja Turtles and Master Splinter were invited to dinner. However, as they were leaving the sewer, the Foot Clan soldiers ambushed them. For unknown reasons, they were stronger this time, and the fight left Master Splinter mortally wounded. Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo escaped with Master Splinter's unconscious body, while Leonardo fought the rest of the soldiers out of the sewer. The Hamato clan and the Foot clan were always rivals, but it had been long before such an attack happened. It was Karai, one of the high rank members of the Foot clan, who wanted to eradicate the Ninja Turtles and Master Splinter. Believing Master Splinter to be dying, Raphael's rage took over him, and he left to kill each and every member of the Foot clan in the city, along with Karai. Arriving at their base while Karai was giving her speech, he began attacking the Foot clan. Raphael was a highly skilled ninja, and when in rage, he was the deadliest of all. He fought all of them, and despite the Foot Clan's multiple attacks, he killed every one of them. The fight injured Raphael as well, as the Foot Clan soldiers stabbed him with knives and arrows. However, he lunged at Karai, and the two began their fierce battle. Raphael grabbed Karai and plunged into the river below, where he pierced his thigh through Karai's back and through her chest. Simultaneously, Karai stabbed Raphael through his neck, thereby ending his life. Karai was sent to a lifelong coma, and her son, Oroku Hiroto, was made the new leader of the Foot Clan. Ten years later, the Foot Clan once again called in for the peace treaty with the Hamato Clan, and it was Master Splinter and Donatello who had decided to attend the peace treaty meeting with the Foot Clan in Japan. Leonardo reminded Master Splinter what had happened to them previously, but the latter reassured them that it was safe. Fujitoid Honeycutt reassembled the ship, and Master Splinter and Donatello left. However, Baxter Stockman was tracking them, and the moment the two left, he commanded his strike team to attack the remaining Ninja Turtles and capture Honeycutt. As they attacked, the group split into two. Michelangelo, April, and Honeycutt made an escape through the sewers, while Leonardo and Casey remained to stop Baxter's ninjas. The ninja soldiers were not humans, but enhanced strong robots and took longer to be subdued. However, both Leo and Casey managed to hold their ground and decimate the robot ninjas with powerful and relentless efforts. Baxter next sent the Mousers. Soon the entire tunnel was filled with robots. In hopes of destroying Honeycutt, he detonated the robots and soon there was a massive explosion in the tunnel. Honeycutt, Mike, and April managed to escape, but Casey and Leonardo died. Meanwhile, Master Splinter and Donatello arrived at the Hamoto village in Japan. They met Master Shinchiro, along with the rest of the Hamato clan members. The meeting was held at a cemetery where Hiroto's ambassador and other armed soldiers were present. Hara, an ambassador of the Foot Clan, greeted them and stated that after they agreed to the terms of the treaty, they would be moving over for a grand feast with Hiroto. Soon, Hiroto arrived and asked Master Splinter and Donatello if they had contacted their family members in New York. Realizing that they had been tricked again, Master Splinter lunged towards Hiroto in rage. Hiroto ordered his troops to attack and a fight erupted between the two clans. Splinter ordered Donatello not to hold back and kill every soldier of the Foot Clan. Hiroto realized that they had no chance of winning and ordered the archery to begin their attack. Arrows began raining on the two of them, and Donatello and Master Splinter, in a scream of agony for each other, died. The Amato
Yamato clan, reinforcements arrived and managed to drive off the Foot Clan soldier and Hiroto, but by then, they had already lost Splinter and Donatello. Michelangelo's Life of Solitude The great loss drove Michelangelo into an eternal depression. The once happy-go-lucky turtle lost all purpose in life and planned to end it in peace. It was winter when Mike began his journey to Hakato, Japan. He walked through the snowy mountains in the harshest of weathers without food and water in hopes of dying. Finally, he crashed into a desolate cottage and lost his senses. Despite the struggle and journey without food and water for such a long time, Mike woke up alive. It was spring and a voice whispered in his head, stating that this was not his destiny. Mike chose to survive but also live a life of solitude. The land provided him with basic necessities and peace, and Mike spent his time meditating on his father's journal. He continued this life for three years before a group of thugs arrived at his residence and began beating him relentlessly. Mike didn't fight back and allowed himself to get pummeled to death, wondering how his brothers would have reacted to the situation. He recalled an incident where he was too scared to join the fight at Orokosaki's fortress, and Master Splinter asked him to snap out of it and join the fight. Recalling the moment and believing that he was not a coward, Mike stood up and began fighting the thugs. It was a few easy blows with which all of them were down except for one who had escaped. Mike realized that his life was not in the mountains but in revenge for his family. As he descended from the mountain, he arrived at a small village that was set ablaze and, and noticed the gangster who had escaped during the confrontation with him previously. It was evident that he, along along with other gang members, was looting the village and killed everyone. Mike wasted no time and charged towards them. It was an easy fight, and all the gang members were down in a few blows. One of the surviving members of the village, an old man, approached Mike and asked to flee before further gang members arrived. They worked for the ruthless crime boss, Olgoy Korkoy, aka the Death Worm, who would soon arrive at the village with his army. Recalling Splinter's words, Michelangelo began weeping, and that was when he began having visuals of the ghost of his brothers before him, Leonardo, Raphael, and Donatello. Raphael asked him to stop crying and do as the old man said. Mike followed orders and continued living a nomadic life, traveling to places and hiding from the Death Worm army. The ghastly visuals of his brothers were then a regular occurrence, and they appeared to him on numerous occasions, passing advice at different instances. He reached the southern edge of Hokkaido and began swimming through the sea of Japan towards the mainland. Once reached, he began moving further south, using the western coastline. He took a halt at the Monument of Remembrance in Akita and began quarreling with the ghostly visages of his brother. As Raphael mocked him for running away from the Death Worm, Mike yelled at him for being the reason for the demise of everyone. Raphael replied, stating that he might be the reason why things began rolling. But in some way or the other, the fight between Foot Clan and them was inevitable. The rest of the brothers explained to Mike that since they were all dead, it was Mike's job to take down Hiroto and put an end to the Foot Clan. He took a ferry from Sakamanato, traveling to Korea, and spent the night on it talking to the visuals of his brothers. However, there were a few death worm thugs on the ferry as well, and after fighting them, Mike had to jump into the waters. After swimming for a while, he fell unconscious, and the waves brought his body back to the shore of Chiburijima. He was rescued by an old man named Master Yip and his dog Nori. Master Yip was from the Hamato clan and knew exactly about all that had happened to him previously. Master Yip had previously trained Master Splinter as well and he agreed to train Michelangelo. Michelangelo stayed with Yip for a significant amount of time and completed his training. As he was about to head to the west, Yip asked him if it would be honorable to rush towards an enemy after escaping from another, pointing out his fearful retreat from the Death Worm. Thus, Mike decided that he would first face off with Death Worm before beginning his journey to New York. He arrived at the semi-recently unified Korean Republic and traveled to a lawless Korean demilitarized zone named Town 38, where the Death Worm was last seen. He sold some of his weapons and entered a restaurant to buy a meal. However, as he was eating, some of the goons noticed him and freaked out at his appearance. A bald goon with the death worm tattoo attacked him, and after being thrashed by Mike, he revealed the location of death worm. It was in Mongolia. Mike next stole a car and began his journey. However, once Mike reached Mongolia, he noticed he had lost his sight. He was scared and paranoid about it and was soon captured by the people of a Mongolian tribe under the command of 
Tormagen Noyan, the chief of Orda and Obug. Once he was taken before him, the man seemed friendly. He explained to Mike that it was the radiation that made him blind, and agreed to let him live amongst the tribe. Mike spent days with them, eventually learning ways of fighting without his eyes. But the peace was again short-lived. Soon, large hordes of deathworm soldiers arrived and decimated the entire tribe. Mike tried fighting back, but he was captured as well. The shock of the battle gave him back his vision, and he saw corpses of Noyan and all the other tribesmen before him. He was then taken to an internment camp in Kazakhstan. He was not alone, as there were various other fighters like him humans and mutants alike. The boss, Abigail Finn, arrived and explained that they were all fitted with a microbomb in their neck, which would explode if they tried escaping or disobeying their command. They were all imprisoned and made to fight with each other in a gladiator match, where only the victor would be allowed to escape from it. Mike met a man named Shaka from South Africa. He was of Swahili descent and planned to eradicate Deathworm after winning his escape. Both Shaka and Mike were the top-tier fighters amongst humans and mutants, respectively and were made to fight each other in the final round. The rules were simple. One fighter had to kill the other to be declared the winner. Shaka realized Mike's need to win the fight and later exact revenge on Hirodo for the death of his family, and he made a suicidal move to attack Abigail Finn. He threw his axe at Finn, making sure it passed the fence and cut her arm. Abigail, in return, ordered to detonate the bomb inside Shaka, and he died a horrifying death before Mike. Following this, the microbomb was removed from Mike's neck, but the latter was far away from peace. He grabbed Finn by the throat and made her reveal the location of Deathworm, which was in Europe. Mike soon left for the Deathworm, and arriving in Europe, he faced all the Deathworm soldiers and killed them one after the other, before he finally met Olgoi Korgoi. The two fought, and Michelangelo easily overpowered him and killed him by piercing his sigh through his head. Thus, Mike's task was over, and he began his final mission to finish Hiroko Hiroto and the Foot Clan once and for all. Michelangelo's Final Mission New York was then ruled by Oroko Hiroto and the Foot Clan. His mother, Karai, was in a coma, and he was sure that all the Ninja Turtles were killed. Soon, Mike arrived and climbed his way into the zone controlled by foot soldiers. He stole a motorcycle that belonged to a girl named Jones and dashed as close as possible to Hiroto's stronghold. As he arrived, he flung from the bike, attaching dynamite to it and tossing it to hit a fuel truck. It caused a massive explosion, and Mike jumped into a manhole nearby. Traveling through the sewers as Mike left. He arrived at the city center with cyborg ninjas attacking him. Mike easily defeated them and continued his journey. Meanwhile, when Hirota was informed about the chaos, he asked his soldiers to use lethal force and subdue the threat at all costs. Mike stole another motorcycle and made his way into the lower level of Hirota's tower. Hirota was shocked to see a ninja turtle on his way to attack and ordered all his forces to stop him. Heavily armed foot guards guarded the tower, and Mike once again used a powerful explosion to make his entry. Taking down all the soldiers, he soon reached the second floor, where he had to face elite ninja warriors along with Stockman's cycloptic robot with Mauser heads. Mike used a pair of tomfas to create a localized EMP strike to take down the Mausers and then stabbed his katana through the cyclops, but the momentum tossed Mike out of the building. Mike survived the fall but was badly injured. The cyborg ninjas were dispatched to find him, but thanks to Jones, he managed to escape. At the sewers, Mike, out of guilt and sorrow, planned to end his life. But before he could do so, he passed out owing to the enormous blood loss. While unconscious, Mike found himself in a bed surrounded by his brothers. And when his eyes opened, he found himself in a bed with April, asking whom he was talking to. Mike was shocked to find April alive, who also had a daughter, Casey Marie Jones, the girl who helped him escape. Meanwhile, Hiroto made a public announcement announcement stating that until and unless the terrorist referring to Mike, was captured and executed. The city would be under martial law. Soon, cyborg officers began attacking the civilians, and Casey and her team left the sewers to help them. Mike, healed from his previous wounds, decided to go after Hiroto. However, Casey and her team decided to help him out and showed him a massive armored truck named Battleshell. Mike, Casey, and the rest of the rebels sought to take down Baxter Stockman and his forces first. They arrived at Roosevelt Island and began their fight with Baxter's robots and cyborgs. Mike went into Solo and began taking down as many robots as possible, until a walking tank pinned him down, thanks to Casey who arrived just in time and saved Mike. The fight continued and April arrived in the battle shell, smashing through the walls of Stockman's fortress. April plugged Honeycutt's head into Baxter's mainframe, revealing her motives of destroying all of Baxter's network and him as well. Stockman knocked her and removed Honeycutt from the mainframe, but it was too late. Professor Honeycutt had finally awakened, and he electrocuted Stockman to 
to death and eradicated his nanomachines. He gained all access to Stockman's tech, and Hiroto lost all his defenses from Stockman. Soon, all the cyborg soldiers and officers, terrorizing the civilians on the street, went inert, and the mob began beating them and destroying them completely. Mike was ready and prepared to face Hiroto. Mike entered Hiroto's tower, and the soldiers who tried to stop him were all killed. They were at least a thousand dead bodies of Foot Clan soldiers in the building. As Mike relentlessly kept pushing them further, he finally met Hiroto, who was covered in a nanotech suit of armor. The suit could absorb lethal blows without causing much damage to Hiroto. The two fought a fearsome battle as it was the last one for them. Hiroto initially had the upper hand owing to his armor, but Mike eventually managed to deliver blows to damage the suit and reveal weak spots. All these years, Mike had preserved the signature weapons of his deceased brothers, and he took the opportunity to attack Hiroto with them. When Hiroto realized that he was about to lose the fight, he initiated an explosion in a suit to destroy both of them. The explosion mortally wounded both of them, and Hiroto died instantly. Casey and April arrived and found Mike taking his final breath. Mike finally died, and he opened his eyes to find himself with his brothers, Master Splinter, and Casey Jones. Conclusion. So we've finally come to the end of the video, and we hope you've liked our content. Although dark and highly deviated from much jovial approach, The Last Ronin Saga is by far the best story in the Ninja Turtle franchise, catering to a wider range of audiences globally. Choosing Michelangelo as the last Ronin was unexpected, for which the gravity of the saga uplifted itself. Throughout the series, Michelangelo can be seen mourning the losses and living a life of pain and agony. The issues frequently made transitions to the past, crafting out every detail minutely. It was indeed a masterpiece. The saga laid the foundation for the new generation of Ninja Turtles, which April and Casey raised. We can only wait to see if these four new turtles are good enough replacements for the iconic Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo, and Raphael. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone!